The PPE which should be worn when dealing with a patient who is deemed as low possibility of Ebola is an apron and nitrile gloves plus a mask and visor should there be a risk of splashing for blood or body fluids. Before applying PPE, it's extremely important to wash your hands. First, wet your hands, then apply liquid soap. Create a lather covering the fingertips, palms, backs of the hands and in between the fingers, and the thumbs. Rinse the hands and dry thoroughly. First, the apron should be placed over the head and tied at the waist. This is followed by a pair of close-fitting nitrile gloves. If there is a risk of splashing with blood and body fluids, then a fluid repellent surgical mask should be worn. It is important to mould this to the face, ensuring you pinch at the nose to ensure a good seal. This would be followed by a visor. We'll now look at the PPE for a patient who is deemed as high possibility for Ebola. A water repellent tie chem or microguard suit. One pair of water repellent overboots and wellingtons if supplied. An air fed hood, a hose and a functioning battery pack. Two pairs of sterile gloves and a disposable green apron. As you may be in PPE for some time, it is important to drink some water and visit the toilet before donning. Wearing scrubs, the healthcare worker puts on the coveralls, rolling them up to their knees. This may be easier while sitting down. The buddy will assist the healthcare worker using the aid memoir. The healthcare worker puts on Wellington boots, tucking the scrubs into the boots. If there are no Wellingtons, then covered shoes should be worn. The healthcare worker puts water repellent over boots on top of the boots and coverall and ties at the front. The healthcare worker puts on the first pair of sterile gloves and pulls the coveralls up or to their waist. Remember, sterile gloves are only worn to ensure a tight fit and not for sterility purposes. The healthcare worker pulls the coveralls on. 
The buddy assists the healthcare worker to zip up the coverall, cover the zips and ensure the entire body is protected. The buddy assists the healthcare worker to fit the battery pack for the air-fed hood to their waist. The buddy assists the healthcare worker to fit the air-fed hood and hose and turns the respirator on. The hood will then inflate. Ensuring the thumb hoop is in place, the healthcare worker then applies a second pair of sterile gloves. The buddy assists the healthcare worker to put on the green apron, tying the apron up to the neck and waist to hold the air-fed hood hose in place. The buddy then checks the healthcare worker to ensure the integrity of the PPE before the healthcare worker is cleared to enter the isolation room. The buddy should wear a water-repellent, disposable, long-sleeved gown, a surgical mask, visor and two pairs of sterile gloves. A disposable waterproof sheet is placed on the floor. The buddy inspects the healthcare worker's PPE as they leave the isolation room. Should the PPE be contaminated, then the buddy should wipe with chlorine impregnated wipes at 5,000 parts per million. The buddy applies alcohol-based hand rub to the healthcare worker's gloved hands. The healthcare worker rubs this into their gloves. The healthcare worker removes their first pair of gloves and places on the blue sheet. The healthcare worker removes their apron by breaking the neck and waist while rolling it into itself. Placed on a blue sheet, the buddy applies alcohol-based hand rub to the healthcare worker's gloved hands. The healthcare worker rubs this into their gloves. The buddy switches off the battery pack and disconnects the air-fed hood. 
the hood and the hose is removed and placed on the blue sheet. If the hose is contaminated with blood or body fluids, then it should be disposed of as clinical waste. The battery pack should be placed into the plastic line box. This should be decontaminated with 10,000 parts per million of available chlorine as per protocol. Break the ties on the overshoes and cut the elastic trim to ease removal. Dispose of the scissors as sharps at the point of use. The buddy assists the healthcare worker to remove their coverall. The buddy then removes the coverall by rolling it backwards, taking care not to touch the exterior of the healthcare worker's suit. The buddy assists the healthcare worker to remove their feet from the coverall. Then the healthcare worker stands on top of the coverall. The healthcare worker steps off the blue sheet, removes their Wellington boots or shoes and performs hand hygiene as before. The buddy applies alcohol based hand rub to her gloved hands, rubs into the gloves and then removes the outer pair. The buddy then carefully folds the blue sheet into itself, ensuring the contents do not spill onto the floor. The package is then disposed of into a yellow bag as clinical waste.